Funny enough, the initial premise and title for the video was that this was a fake travel card. The Bank of America Business Travel is one of the more interesting options for small business owners who want to earn rewards on their expenses. In today's video, we're going to review the card, compare it to some other options, and also look at some key considerations. Big favor before we dive into all of this is to give us a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. And if you are new here and you want to maximize the cash back or travel rewards that you get from your business expenses, then consider subscribing. The core premise of the card is that you earn 1.5 points for every $1 you spend on all your purchases everywhere with no cap. Similar to the B of A Unlimited Cash and Customized Cash Business Cards, this is part of the Preferred Rewards program. This means that you can get substantially more value, but you have to have your assets with them. Reminder that this is based off your business deposits, so that can be checking savings or CDs, and also your business investment accounts, such as working capital. My understanding from this is that business and personal are going to be two separate sides, so you can't really commingle. Depending on the type of business you run, this doesn't feel that unreasonable. For example, with restaurants and a lot of other businesses that have pretty high overhead, you probably have have capital as cushion for any bad months. In contrast, for service businesses, maybe you don't keep as much capital because there's less risk and there's less overhead, and also because of remote work. If your other employees are working from home or maybe you don't have that many employees, then it doesn't really matter. Within preferred rewards, there's going to be three tiers. On the low end, you have gold that's between $20,000 and $50,000, platinum that's $50,000 to $100,000, and platinum honors, which is $100K and up. For the boost, we have 25, 50, and 75%. So for gold, it's 25%, meaning that 1.5x is really 1.875x. With platinum, you're getting 50%, meaning that you're getting 2.25x, platinum honors, 75%, 2.625x. In addition to the 1.5x everywhere, you also get 3x back for travel that you booked through their portal, so the Bank of America one. Or I think technically it's called the Travel Center, but you get the idea. Running the numbers for the different levels, for gold, you're getting 3.75x, platinum is 4.5x, and platinum honors, 5.25x. With the platinum status, it does sound pretty good because it's matching the Chase trifecta. Over on that end, you're getting 4.5% in effective value if you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve and you have something like the Freedom Unlimited or Ink Unlimited. If 4.5x is good, then 5.25 is even better. The one disadvantage for all of this is that the points are not as advantageous as a lot of other programs. Here, you can only redeem them as a statement credit to offset travel as well as dining purchases. The part that sucks is that you're not really getting any additional value on top. So for example, 4.5x is 4.5%, 5.25x is 5.25%. We'll talk a bit more about this in part three, but know that the upside is relatively capped and you know what you're getting. Still though, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, especially given that this is a no annual fee card and it also has no foreign transaction fees, which is not common for no annual fee cards. This is super helpful if you work with a lot of international vendors and you do a lot of international orders and you would otherwise be eating an extra 3% in fees. Obviously, it depends on your other cards and setups and whether you want to pay annual fees of those cards. If you don't mind redeeming your points towards dining and travel, then this is a solid card. And to be fair, you could argue that by itself, it's not that exciting. 1.5x isn't really hurting anyone, but it also might not move the needle. But if you have platinum honors, then it's amazing. 2.625 in effective value on everything with no cap is on that top level and arguably one of the best single card setups. Now add in the fact that you get 3x back when you book through the portal, upwards of 5.25% in value. If you don't care about aspirational travel and you're not looking to transfer out to partners, then I'd argue 5.25% is actually at the top of business cards in terms of travel spending and the best option. And obviously there are a lot of other considerations, but if you look at it in a vacuum, this seems like a pretty low risk and high upside card. Worst case, if you don't like the setup, if you don't like Bank of America, then just keep the card. It's not hurting you because there's no fee. On that note, if you do want to learn about this card or pretty much any other card out there and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise it's a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. For part two, let's look at some competitors. It does depend on the multiplier that you're considering. And for this whole thing, I'm assuming that you either have or you're going for platinum or platinum honors. If you don't, or you don't plan to do that, then I would question whether these are worthwhile at all because they're kind of baseline cards. 1.5% by itself is great, but it just doesn't move the needle compared to some other options. Call me crazy, but I feel like people deal with Bank of America solely because of these platinum honors boosts, and that's the whole point. For the 1.5x, the most obvious competitor is within Bank of America, the unlimited cash version of this card, which is pretty much the same. One of the key differences is that instead of earning points, you're earning cash back. So 1.5, 1.5, in which case you'd rather take the cash because why would you take these points that are harder to use? In that specific vacuum, the cashback card wins, but there are two advantages on the travel side. Number one is the fact that there's no foreign transaction fees. And number two, the fact that you earn 3x on their travel portal. If you don't care about either of those, then I think the cashback version is better. But if you do, then it just depends on your spend and whether you want to sacrifice that liquidity. Another obvious competitor that I'm expecting to stick around is the Capital One Spark Cash Plus. 
So for that card, there is an annual fee and you're only earning 2% back. But what people don't know is that it's actually 2x Capital One points and there is substantially more value if you care about aspirational travel. Not for everyone, and we'll talk more about this in part three. For the three x back on the travel portal, I'd argue that you don't really have any competitors on the no annual fee end. With Platinum Honors at 5.25%, you really can't beat that. There probably are some startup cards that do that or will do that, but I feel like that's always more questionable because that can always change. If you move into annual fee cards, then you do have a lot more competitors, but I'd argue that it's also a different equation. For a lot of those cards, the idea is that you're redeeming those points towards aspirational travel rather than more domestic stuff. On the top level, there are some competitive cards out there that maybe have a $700 annual fee and earn 5x back, but the idea and the core premise is more so around lounge access rather than the multipliers. And to be fair, those are awesome cards, but it's just not for everyone, especially the person who's looking at more economic trips. For normal travel, 5.25% beats 5%. The crazy part about this card is that it exceeded my expectations. I went into the outlining and researching process thinking that I would crap on the card. In my head at least, why would I want to get 1.5x when I can get the same thing as cash back where there's a lot more flexibility? Funny enough, my initial premise for the video was that this was a fake travel card. In that case, it is kind of crazy how one category, the 3x back of the BFA Travel Center, is changing the whole equation. For part 3, let's look into some other considerations. One thing I really dislike about the card is that it is kind of still a fake travel card in the sense that you're earning points, but the points don't have any appreciable value. For most other programs like Chase or Capital One, you can redeem your points as a statement credit, but oftentimes you can either transfer them out to partners or you can get more value with certain other cards. So for example, if Chase, if you have to chase Sapphire Reserve, you get 50% more in value towards travel bookings. And then for transferring the partners, I've done deeper dives on the Inc. videos, but the idea is that you can turn $500 of points into maybe a $5,000 business class flight or a $3,000 night hotel in the Maldives. The whole idea being that 1x is not 1%. It's more like 1x is maybe 2 or 3 or 4%, or sometimes even 10% for those international first class flights. And to me at least, that's the allure of credit cards and why I had that initial aversion to the fact that this card didn't really do anything else. If your goal is to be on the beach and buy palm trees, then there are better options. On the flip side, that's not everyone. If you are still trying to grow your business, then maybe you're redeeming those points towards dining rather than towards travel. There's also a lot of other people who want to travel, but their version of travel is more so Hawaii, maybe Mexico, and something local rather than flying 12 hours or 16 hours to the other side of the world. In those cases, this is a solid card. Your mileage may vary, so do what makes sense for you based off your priorities. Main takeaway, if you plan to have sizable assets of Bank of America, and you plan to book through the B of A portal for travel, and you're going to redeem your points towards normal travel as a statement credit or towards dining instead of aspirational travel, then this is arguably the best travel card out there. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards, we have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. If you did make it to this point in the video, then leave a beach emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My question for you is, what are your thoughts on this card? Also, how do you think about travel and using your points from your business towards travel? Is it more so about bringing employees onto cool trips, or maybe you're using them for yourself? So for example, there are some companies that do pretty cool offsites. Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.